welcome everybody to episode number three of the Mike Lopez interview series. I really am excited to share with you guys about this band. This is a great group of guys that I've had the pleasure of knowing for a few years now. This is Aeonic Impulse. They have a, a prog metal style and yeah, I mean, these guys have been working hard for years, getting their music out there, performing live. I would, uh, when I would promote shows and book shows, I would have them on and they were so easy to work with. So I wanted to go ahead and interview them and, and so that everybody could no learn more about them and their music. And it was, a, it turned out to be a pretty, pretty fun episode to do. So I hope you enjoy it. Check it out. Aeonic Impulse. What's up, everybody? This is Mike Lopez, and I am here with the one, the only, Aeonic Impulse. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> good here, so Mike. Hey. Very well, thank you. Good, good, good. Uh, thanks for coming down, you know, on the show. It's uh, It's been a while since I've seen you guys, you know? <laughs> yeah, man, totally. Likewise. It's been a while since we've been seen. <laughs> no, yeah, anyone, really, yes. Uh, you know, this whole COVID thing has, has uh, really changed things up. Uh, for the music scene and you know and for live music in general uh how have you guys been uh dealing with uh rehearsals with covid and uh and you know with everything that's been going on um so obviously like with everyone else we halted everything so we didn't think twice so to keep story stored we didn't see each other for almost two months especially while that time period was you know was a time when everyone was in panic mode um, and then once things started getting a little more stabilized, I'd say around May is when, uh, with precaution, of course, and with, you know, proper guidelines, we felt that it was right to, you know, see each other again and start, you know, getting rehearsals in again, little by little, and just kind of play it by ear. I mean, that's kind of like really the easiest way to explain it. There's no really much other than that. Yeah, it's interesting, Mike, because right before COVID happened, we were already kind of looking to change up our practice uh, situation anyway, because mm -hmm. we started having a, a neighbor calling the cops on us, which we've been practicing here for almost 10 years. And this was very strange that it started happening, you know, out of nowhere. So we actually did change up the situation. We went from, uh, you know, live drums and, and being loud and all that to Bernie getting the electronic drum set, which is behind him. And now we uh, we all do it on headphones, into mixers, the uh, guitars are mic'd up and everything. So this whole year has just been about change and adaptation. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's awesome, man. Like that you guys are still able to adapt and to continue on. Uh, and, you know, for the people at home, uh, you know, people that probably may probably have not come across your music, uh, how would you describe it to to someone new? Weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had to. I'm sorry. I no, it's good. <laughs> I was well aware it was coming. I always go the route and say that we, for people who don't know what frog is, I'm like, oh, it's like a heavier Pink Floyd. You know, like exactly it's the best way to describe it. You have the long songs, you have the atmosphere, and lyric wise, we're very conceptual. We, we like concept albums. We like telling stories. So like bands like Pink Floyd and like Radiohead and stuff like that are, are huge inspirations to our overall sound. And just to add on to that, and this may sound like something that every band would say, but it is true um, to us, is that we really do take every single band or artist as an influence, whether it doesn't matter the genre, we don't look at music that way. It's either it sounds good or it, or it doesn't. And it, we think it sounds good. So it could be post, it could be ambient, it could be pop, it could be electronic, it could be anything that we, honestly, I even I've never would have thought of listening to. If it's applicable to us, we'll write a song around it and we'll add on to it because ultimately we really do want to make each album feel and sound different. And again, it's one of those things that I feel like a lot of bands can say but we really do try to stick to that sort of structure with each album i mean look at our singer this guy's like a pop star or a <laughs> <laughs> it, it couldn't work but it somehow does <laughs> it, it definitely works uh big ups and big credit to to your vocalist uh, i always enjoy your vocals whether live or uh in the album which i have right here i was there <laughs> I was there uh, when when you guys released it, and it's actually autographed by everybody. So, 
So I appreciate awesome. it. Thanks, yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> I was listening to it, and I, it kind of it reminded me of uh, back then when when I heard it the first time and the journey that it takes you on from start to finish. And uh, I, I have to ask, uh, which of you has had a night like what is uh, described here on this album? Yeah, all of us. Everyone. <laughs> I think that's that's the point is that everyone who hears that album can put themselves into that album i mean like who hasn't had a night like that who hasn't had insomnia who hasn't had troubles from the daytime that extend into the night well i haven't actually i'm I'm anything i'm kind of the opposite i fall asleep pretty much everywhere i go every single show we go to we're on the way back home i'll pretty much be knocked out in the car yes we (laughs) all wish we could sleep like <laughs> Big one for sure. One of one of your uh, the probably my my favorite song from the album is "Awaken Away," and yeah, I, I I heard a or I saw a video that Jordan you described or that it was based there there was a part based on a scene from Inception. Uh, has your music been inspired by cinema? Very much so. I I'm a huge movie buff. I mean, everyone's giving me the look because they can attest to that. <laughs> um, I, I feel that art in of itself, whether it's painting, books, movies, music, you shouldn't only be um, influenced by music if you're a musician. You should take influence from all art and apply that. So the way that directors use colors or angles or stuff, I can I can see music to it even uh just looking at uh the song view of the sunrise on it it has that whole speech from charlie chaplin's the great dictator and we used Uh, a lot of sound clips when we first got started we were using clips from the shining and jacob's ladder and stuff that we eventually didn't put on the album because we couldn't get the rights but our live shows would have boondock saints and all and all kinds of stuff yeah i mean i i found that interesting and you know, as uh, an artist, I feel, you know, you get inspiration from all sorts of different things, you know, whether real life or like movies or other music. So I definitely feel that you guys, your music has a lot of uh, different influences, you know, not just musically. And, that, and, and that's very interesting to me. Uh, I also wanted to ask about things like uh, time signatures. I, I noticed that there's ch- changes in the time signatures. Uh, and I, as... <laughs> Because I, I went to music school. I, I'm curious to ask, did any of you attend like a traditional music school or studied theory? I'm the only one that really pursued it. Uh, Ryan and I both took basic courses at uh, El Camino. Mm-hmm. And then I went off um, and did a little bit at Northridge as well. Um, so it's something that like, it's there. And if it's something I need, like it's a tool, but... I don't go into writing with music theory in mind. It's always just like, if something starts sounding a little bit too similar or a little bit too off or something, it's like, it's always a fallback tool to know. But like, I never go in writing like, this needs to be in 13.8 or 15.12. Like, that's not like the mindset, you know? Yeah, yeah, for (laughs) sure. No, it it sounds good. And the, the, the transitions are almost seamless, you know, in your music. So you guys make I I actually really enjoy it. I've known you guys for a few years now, and uh, I know that you've performed live many different locations. What have been some of the highlights from performing in Los Angeles or in anywhere? He shows opening for Persephone, one of Fernie's yeah, favorite band. Yeah, that one was a from like you mentioned Persephone. That was a highlight for me because I mean they're one of those bands that you. And it was funny that one of the bands uh, that uh, really got me into harsher vocals and a much heavier style because that wasn't a style that I was used to. I actually didn't like it all that much, but I think it really grew on me. And those guys, just a way, again, they're conceptual writers. They really write in that manner and just finally being able to see them. And, you know, more importantly, I think the best part is that we became really good friends with them. So all of us, you know, we keep touch base with them. Um, once in a while and um, it's just this really strong connection that I feel like um, just it, it reminds us to why putting all this effort especially doing those kind of shows um, is worth it to us because just the amount of people they meet and again it goes back to the connections we make it's it's worthwhile everything 
I got to um, say one of my favorite places that we've ever played at was Bar Sinister. I was hoping that you would say that. That was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, we're like the last band you would ever expect to play at a goth club, but we had a blast. Oh, they yeah. treated, us, treated us very well, and uh, yeah, we wish we could play there again. <laughs> it was funny, for one time we played, um, I think, which show were you attending that night? I think we did a oh, Bar Kobe. Sinister show once. <laughs> And I think Gasper, you attended a Coheed show, I believe. Probably. And then you left early so you could sing at our yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad. <laughs> we made you miss the encore. No, I've, I've, I've watched, I've seen Coheed so many times. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite, favorite Gasper? I, I like, I, I, I can't even pick one, but I think like Barson, uh, Viper Room, mm. and Viper Whiskey. Room. Like all playing all those LA places, just Troubadour. Yeah, yeah, it was like historic, you know. It's like those yeah. are historic places where a lot of a really fucking famous band to play <laughs> the doors right. you know like you know you, uh, the, was, wasn't elo there like a little like recently or was it yes yeah okay so yes 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 it was yes was it yes or no it was no, it was yes <laughs> <laughs> waited outside that venue since seven in the morning to see us for like two bucks yeah it was great <laughs> Um, and I, I, I have to ask, is there or will we should be should we expect a follow up to a night for the trouble? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK, um, I'm not sure who wants to go first on this. Um, I actually want to let Gaster go first. I think it'd be great to have a curious side because I think the three of the, <laughs> you I just the threw him under the bus. Yeah, I had to. Yeah, yeah, come on, Gaster. <laughs> Um, so like what? Like, yes, yeah, there will be a follow-up. Follow yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that, that was Simple the question. Simple as that. Um, we sorry. have been working on follow-up for quite some time. Actually, some of the songs that were written originally for album one, number one ended up not fitting the theme or the concept, so they were actually held over. Like the very first song we ever written is finally going to be released on the second one. Mm -hmm. So it's been four years since A Night for the Troubled. Yep. Yep. And. Um, I mean, we're, we're working hard on it. We've gotten through the recording phase. Uh, the engineer has it. He's going to mix it, and then it'll get sent to mastering. And in the meantime, we're just focusing on logistics. We're focusing on album artwork, uh, layout, uh, packaging, all you know, the rights, all that stuff in the meantime. We're just you know trying to do as much as we can that when we get it back from the engineer, we're ready to put this thing out. So... Definitely not this year, but we're shooting for next year. Awesome. So that means that it's uh, well well into production already. Yeah. 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 yeah we're all cool. done with our parts. Gasper was the last to lay down his vocals. Yeah. And uh, yeah, couldn't be more excited. I about cannot it. wait till people get to hear. Not yeah. only what, like what Gasper's done, especially. <laughs> I, I fucked it up a little. Oh, bit. shut oh, up! Oh, oh, oh. You shut up! You did not fuck up. You he went did just it. fine. He Mike. did more than just fine. <laughs> I, that's he did one some of the stuff that made me just be like, "Wait, whoa, whoa!" That's <laughs> one of the highlights. Is if I have to pick one highlight, it's going to be Gasper. And I, you know, I think the music will speak for itself. We're not trying. We're not trying to give away like what, who did what, and what song. We're trying to keep that a little bit more hush hush. Yeah. One of the problems with album one was we gave almost the whole album away live, so to speak. We played five mm -hmm. out of six songs. And then when we released the album, it's like, okay, you only haven't heard the intro really. So we're trying to do the opposite this time. We've played, we've played like five songs live, but we're trying to keep the rest of them under wraps for now. Awesome. Uh, if there's a, is there a place that you guys have not played at before that you guys would like to play? Tons. <laughs> the wheelchair. Oh, well, yeah. Staples Center. <laughs> uh, I'll play the Coliseum. But, but in, in terms of reachable goals, um, I would definitely want to play the, the Troubadour again. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, you know, uh, we had a great experience there, and I would love – we played the Whiskey and Viper Room on – you know, multiple occasions, but I would want to go back to the Troubadour. We never played the Roxy. Oh, we haven't played the Roxy. I would love to play the Roxy. W well, I did, but with uh, a different band. Yeah, a different yeah. band. Yeah. So, but yes, yeah, so that was fun. I think another one may be a little out of reach, but I know a lot of us, actually, all of us, would be happy to play as part of Glass House once we're able to get. Yeah, that, that would be a really Glass good one. Or yeah. even like uh, the House of Blues as an opener uh, to somebody. Or even just getting the hell out of California and playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> 
That's cool. Yeah. Uh, what does the the future have in store? Or, or I guess the second album is uh, is the the future for you guys. You know, um, what yeah, other goals? Album. What other goals do you guys have in mind? That's that's a difficult question. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of transition transitional things happening in our own individual lives right now, especially through COVID. You know, some of us are trying to find new jobs after the music scene crashed and. You know, we're just focused on trying to rebuild our lives, so to speak. Some of us are have other goals um, that will come to fruition later. So as of what's going to happen for the band right now, like the only goal is just to get that album out. Right. S try and promote it as much as possible. See what happens with it. Yeah. But um, I think it's hard to answer even even just given the state of things and who knows when it's going to go back to normal. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Even, I think like that has to be the main goal right now. And, and that is really the most that we can do um, in, in most cases, you know. Yeah. If somebody likes it enough, I hope we can tour it, but yeah, you know, and I mean, we got to bring but back touring. But who knows when we can tour? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, you know, we're not even thinking about live shows. So I think that for it to be, I think, but I think the benefit of it is that we have so much time. So I think there's a much, there's many more chances for us and much more, many more opportunities for us to be able to promote it more heavily than we did with mm -hmm. album one. And really, just try to tackle this on our own um, without having to, you know, get a lot of outside help. I mean, which we might do actually. But point being is that I think, yeah, we, we have a lot planned for this that we're looking forward to. Awesome, sounds good. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll eventually be a three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you it'll be here before you know it. You know. <laughs> uh, and for for people who want to know more about Aonic Impulse, where can they reach you and your music? www.aonicimpulse.com. <laughs> Why? That yeah, is... we have we have a <laughs> we have a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram, YouTube, YouTube Spotify, Bandcamp, Apple Music, <laughs> Tinder. Um, <laughs> I don't manage the Tinder. <laughs> is it a joint account or an individual? <laughs> under his name, but it's a picture of all of us. There you no, go. I, I actually put it under. No, no, no. I actually wrote Aonic Impulse as the name for it. And then I, we've actually gotten some matches. Where people are like, okay, who is it? And I was like, all of us. It's all or nothing. You don't get a choice. Now, if you're just listen to the music. <laughs> You might want to rephrase that last, you don't get a choice. Yeah, that's not <laughs> We're in the year 2020, right? Oh, and with that, and with that, uh, I want to thank Aeonic Impulse for, uh, for joining me t today. And uh, check out their music. It's definitely uh, an experience uh, for anyone. Uh, I want to thank you guys for stopping by, for sure. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one.